sophomore year in high school, 2017. Great year for gaming. The Switch released, we got games like Link's Wild Breath, Super Mario Odyssey, Hollow Knight, Cuphead, Hat in Time, Sonic Mania, Mario and Rabbit's Kingdom Battle for some strange unknown reason. It was a year in gaming that will be extremely hard to beat. You don't see a lineup of games that good all come out in the same year very often. You just don't. Quality title after quality title, it just didn't seem to stop. But unfortunately, the year of 2017 personally was one of the worst years of my life <laughs> yeah i know it's surprising you're probably wondering how can one of the best years in gaming be one of the worst years of your life i thought you were a gamer and it was a great year for gaming i played a ton of games that year it was amazing but you see i'm just gonna be real with you i was struggling with something i'm sure some of you may have heard of it uh <laughs> starts with a d <laughs> Ends with depression. I was depressed, socially awkward, still am to this day, and most of all I struggled with having no self-confidence. It was dumb, stupid, I never want to experience anything like that again, and I thank god I'm not there anymore. But it's times like that where I really appreciate the art of video games. People play video games for many different reasons. Maybe you play games to let out your frustration, or maybe you play for the relaxing feeling after a long day of work, or maybe you play games just to pass the time throughout the days. But video games, to me, aren't just some form of entertainment. They're an escape. It's something we can escape to and get our minds off the stress and the lame -o lame stuff we go through in life. And during that rough patch of my life, these games helped me get my mind off things and just enjoy the experiences they had to offer. You see these emotions? They're stupid. I don't want anyone to go through this kind of stuff. I had to continue to deal with all of this well into 2018, gradually getting better as time went, but suddenly something happened near the end of that summer of that year that I was not expecting at all. There I was, doing my daily routine, laying in my bed blasting Boulevard of Broken Dreams by Green Day into my eardrums when all of a sudden I had a strong urge to shop on the eShop on my Nintendo Switch. I browsed around for a couple of minutes till I stumbled across a game that was one of the most polished platformers I've ever played. A game that had one of the best soundtracks I've ever listened to. And a game that had a story that impacted me in a way that I never felt before. Celeste was that game. I didn't really think much about it when purchasing it. I saw some good reviews, it looked pretty fun, and so I bought it. But little did I know that this game would be more than just some polished platformer. But first, let's talk about that polish. Think of this game as a smooth coat of nail polish on an index finger. Now scratch that because this game's the whole freaking bottle of nail polish. Everything is so silky smooth, it looks good, feels good, sounds good, it's everything you want in a 2D platformer. Celeste is pretty insane overall. The amount of time they took to master and critique the feelings and controls is worth a playthrough alone. It's one of those games where the controls are so tight and responsive when you make a mistake, it's not the game's fault, it's yours. When making a game, in the platforming genre especially, you want it to feel as best as possible. And it's obvious that was their focus when making Celeste. I mean, just look at this. Do I really need to say much else? With a game that involves extreme precision and timing, it was important for them to nail the physics and feeling of every jump, platform, game mechanic, almost everything. Not only that, but they also had to design levels to flow well with these mechanics. Your moveset involves running, jumping, climbing, and dashing. Now this moveset may sound pretty basic on the surface, but the sheer amount of different ways they incorporated these mechanics into every chapter of the game is incredible. You can latch onto walls to climb up or down for a certain amount of time before running out of stamina. This can be used to stop your momentum from a dash, or used to climb up to higher heights to get more out of your standard jump. You can also use the dash to propel yourself forward in whichever way you want. However, you can only use your dash once in midair, and the only way to replenish it is by landing back onto solid ground or collecting one of these green diamond objects. These mechanics not only feel good to use, but they can also be utilized in tons of different ways. And there's multiple different playstyles depending on what your preference is. From what I've learned, you can be two types of people when playing this game. Number one, the slow and methodical. Okay, 
just uh, jump down here. So, yeah, we just gotta jump. Now, actually, no, let's uh, try, try it again. And, oh, actually, no. Okay, uh, uh, jump dash. Okay, uh, okay, let's go up here. Uh, okay, so hop here. And, uh, okay, let's see what's up here. Number two, the guns ablazing. Each chapter also slowly introduces new ways of mobility and platforming methods. You'll find yourself naturally learning new ways of traversal without even knowing it because of how seamless the level design flows throughout the game. The game will show you one gimmick, teach you the basics of how it works, and slowly expand upon it in many ways. The general feeling of the game is top notch, even in its graphics and animation. The sprite work is amazing, and the fluidity of the character animations and effects are very visually appealing. And for climbing a giant snowy mountain the whole game, the environments are surprisingly diverse and colorful. You'll find yourself in some ruins, crystal caves, and even a rundown city. One other thing that complements the rest of the game extremely well is the soundtrack. By far my favorite thing about each piece of music in this game is its sense of progression. At the beginning of each chapter, the music will be set in a more chill tone for the most part, but as you get more and more into the level, the difficulty starts to ramp up, thus making the music gradually get more and more intense. It creates an adrenaline rush while platforming through gauntlets of hazards, and the tone of each piece matches the atmosphere of every area flawlessly. The music almost has a sense of emotion of its own. At times, it can be relaxing and soothing. It can be encouraging and triumphant. It can also provoke a sense of anxiety, a feeling of fear that's unpleasant and unwelcomed. A feeling of being lost, not knowing where to go or what to do. I can't tell you how atmospheric the music really is. You can tell how much passion and feelings the composer put into this masterpiece of a soundtrack, even going on to say personally in a reply to a YouTube comment saying, in a lot of ways, it was a very personal soundtrack for me. It's safe to say I absolutely love this game. I love how tight the controls feel. I love how passionate and atmospheric the music can get. But there's one more thing that Celeste had that I will never forget. The cherry on top of everything. But first we need to go back to the topic at hand and ah oh man, what was that again? Um uh Celeste brought something to the table that I never felt from a video game. As mentioned before, this game helped me in a tough time in my life, and the crazy thing about it to me is it was because of its story. It was genuinely surprising. I wasn't expecting anything from the story department from this game. Now, I'm not a story type guy. I prefer gameplay over everything else. If the game itself isn't fun to play, then why bother? At least that's how I feel. But I'm not completely against stories. It can enhance a game's experience like none other. But personally, I could care less about saving the princess or protecting the world. Just make it fun to play and I'm all for it. But anyways, I guess what I'm trying to say is the story of Celeste hit different for me personally. This game tells a deep story of a girl named Madeline trying to achieve her goal of climbing this huge obstacle, Celeste Mountain. But it's a little more deeper than just that. Not only is she trying to overcome this giant mountain physically, but she's trying to overcome herself mentally, struggling with anxiety, depression, and low self-esteem. She herself doesn't even know why she's climbing this mountain in the first place. She's just there to get her mind off things, trying to get herself out of her head. But this journey proves to be more difficult than she thought, as her emotions get in the way of everything. Eventually, you come across her anxiety personified as an evil part of herself, constantly chasing her and tormenting her, saying things like, You can't do this. You're not a mountain climber. I'm just trying to protect you. This part of her tries to hold her back with negative thoughts and doubt. Her emotions overpower herself to the point where she starts to doubt herself entirely. But it's not until you persevere through the obstacles of the mountain and with a little help from some friends along the way, you start to learn how to overcome your fear and low self-esteem. She starts to understand herself. She learns to find a balance between her emotions to climb past this both mentally and physical mountain in front of her. 
After finally understanding her emotions, she battles all the way up to the summit with confidence, conquering her challenges, feelings, and this rough patch in her life. This was why Celeste was so special to me. It wasn't so much of the physical story it told, but it was the relatable feeling I had with Madeline. The constant chasing of anxiety over my life. The feeling of doubt. The feeling of not believing in myself. I hated it. I thought no one liked me. I thought I wasn't worth anything. I wanted these thoughts and emotions to go away. But it wasn't until I matured more through this experience, and with the help of friends and family, I was able to climb over this depressing, quote-unquote, mountain in a sense. Celeste is a virtual representation of overcoming your emotions, and the way they incorporated this symbolism into the actual gameplay is crazy. The game is hard. Climbing up this mountain can be a struggle in certain sections, symbolizing the constant upward battle Madeline had to go through to defeat her fears. These creatures you encounter eventually represent your negative thoughts as monsters trying to hurt you. Celeste Mountain itself represents life. It's a constant up and down battle like climbing a mountain. But the grind and the things you learn when climbing these mountains of struggles pay off when you reach the top, becoming a better person in the long run. These may not be the proper representations that the developers intended for them to represent, but personally, that's the way I see them. So that's Celeste in a nutshell to me. This game was more than just some form of entertainment. It was an experience. I don't know if I'll ever play a game quite like it again. There was so much care and passion and feelings in every single aspect of this game. And its story touched me in a time I needed it the most. I'll never forget it. So I just wanted to say a big thank you to the development team of this game for creating the beautiful and inspiring creation that is Celeste.